Oi, you know what time it is. You're tuned in listening to the Dry That Aussie Metal Guy. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of his content when it drops. And remember, stay brutal, you mad dogs. Roof. G'day, how sure. the hell are you all going? It's Jai, that Aussie metal guy here with Crank.com and with Cranium Radio. So today, tonight, this morning, wherever you are in the world, it's a great pleasure <laughs> that I'm having a chat with the almighty Arjun Anthony Lucasen of Arian, Star One, Stream of Passion, Vengeance. He's worked etc. etc. I could et go on all night probably who you <laughs> I know. Don't have do worked it. Don't with, do but it. I won't do it. But tonight we are chatting about your collaboration with Simone Simons. I have interviewed her with for Epica as well. So when I oh, see cool. the news coming out for this, I was super, super excited as you Brilliant. probably were to start working with her. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. She asked me five years ago. And I was like, really, really? But I was so busy, you know, so I, I just couldn't do it. I was like, I want to do it, but give me some time. And every year, you know, we got together and we talked about what kind of music are we going to make and what it's going to be about. And then finally, two years ago or one and a half years ago, I, I had the time, you know, I was I was doing an area on live show and I had some extra time. And I said, OK, Simone, let's do it, you know, because because this uh, I want to take my time for it. You know, I want to take at least a year for it and put full time in it because this is not a project I do on the side. You know, it's it's a main project. It's very important for me. So, yeah, it all worked out. It all worked out really. It's something that's been on the cards for you guys for quite a while because you and Simone have done collaborations oh, here yes. and there, teamed so up many, for songs. So many. It's not like a first time thing. So it's obviously something no. that's been on the cards for quite a while, but she's been so busy with Epica, I think over eight studio I albums know, now, I know. countless yeah. world tours. Um, so for you guys to kind of make the time, can you tell me a little bit about kind of when you guys first kind of collaborated? What was it like for that first meeting and that collaboration process for it to kind of continue over the years and become good friends that you are? Okay. Well, um, the first time we met was actually, she, she was only 15 years old or something. And she, I saw her in, in a venue. I don't know if I was having a show myself. And she came to me with, with her boyfriend, Mark, and, uh, you know, this little girl, I love your music, you know? And I was like, okay, cool. I'm a singer too. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> and then later on, you know, I saw her becoming successful with Epica and it was like, whoa, you know, she loves my music and she's so successful right now. So uh, first time I asked her uh, to sing on my album was, uh, I think, uh, with the album uh, 01010. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, 01, 01, 01, 001. I know it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she sang the song Web of Light and she came to my studio and it was so much fun. You know, we had so she has you interviewed her. So, you know, she has this dry sense of humor um, and we had such a great time together. So I knew that was the the start of a, of a long collaboration. And I, I think ever since then, she was on almost every Arion album and she was in the last two Arion shows, of course. So uh it's so lovely to work with her. And uh, as I said, a sense of humor is important for me. And she's intelligent, you know, she's she's a beautiful woman. And she's so talented, such a great voice, so versatile. So, uh, yeah, total honor to work with her. Yeah, she definitely has just this amazing voice that just sticks with you long after hearing her sing. Totally. Tell me about when she kind of reached out and contacted you and she's like, okay, then, Arjun, we got the time. Let's kind of crack into this start working on this album kind of when and tell me a little bit about that time well we had a lot of skype calls um talking about the style of course we wanted to be on the same wavelength but we were from the beginning you know we were like uh, yeah well i listened to, i don't know if you like it but i listened to uh, rammstein a lot lately yeah me too me too <laughs> yeah and i like this new muse song uh, called uh, called this and yeah yeah i love that too so we've been sending each other our favorite music and we we clearly defined the style there, you know, we wanted it to be uh, pretty heavy, pretty industrial, you know, we didn't want to create a pop album trying to reach as many people as we could, you know, that's because that's not us just, so we wanted to make a combination of uh, pretty heavy metal and uh, beautiful ballads, because that's what she's good at, you know, if you listen to the Epica stuff, it's, she can do the 
of course she can do the belting she can do the high opera voice but uh, what i love most about her is her her, her uh, ballad atmospheric stuff um so yeah then she gave me a, a list of uh, song titles and she gave me a list of topics that she wanted to write about and uh, which is a challenge for me you know because i'm this control freak bastard you know with arion who does exactly what i want and i don't give a shit when any anyone thinks of it and and now suddenly you know i uh, i have someone telling me what to do and i have to please someone with with, with the music and um it was a challenge for me but i love challenges you know because it gets the best out of me so uh, i think uh, i don't i don't remember uh, what the first song was i think yeah it was a cradle to the grave um and I thought, you know, I I gotta I gotta record a song for her that will blow her away. You know, that's the first song I sent her. So uh, I sent her the in, uh, instrumental song, and she was like, "Yes, you know, <laughs> this is what I mean." Uh, and then I I just looked at her list of song titles, and I thought, well, which song title fits the best to this song? Um, and then I I write rubbish lyrics. That's usually how I work. I write rubbish uh, rubbish lyrics, and then I record them with my own voice. Uh, send it back to Simone. Is this what is this okay? And and uh, uh, well, she's very honest. You know, she would tell me, no, I want that different. No, that's not good. Find something else there, uh, which is good. You know, I I, I learned from that. Um, and yeah, and then. Uh, uh, my partner Lori helped write the lyrics. Uh, then I sang guide vocals uh, for her with the real lyrics. And she came to my studio, and we recorded the song. And it, yeah, it was just the, from the beginning on. You know, we knew that that it was going to work. Oh, that track absolutely rips. And there's a special guest feature on it, people, which oh, is yes. absolutely yes. amazing, dude. It, it yeah. came out really, really good. I loved the diversity with that, this album from that Eterna track, cool. like at the start. That cool. Simone, like she just hits you straight out the gate with her vocals. And then you kind of have that. Um, totally group vocal kind of sound thing going where it just kind of builds that atmosphere in that track. And it kind of really, really kicks it off to a good start of the album. Tell us about that cool. opening track. Uh, you mean Iterna? Yes. You sounded better okay. than my Aussie lingo there. <laughs> <laughs> Aussie lingo. Uh, well, uh, I, I think that's the most Arion ish track uh, on the album. Um she came with the title Eterna, you know, which means eternity. So it had to be huge, you know, and it's Latin. So it has to be classic and big. Uh, and I wanted to just to create the biggest song I, I could think of. Um, and I wanted like huge choirs on it and, and lots of weird synthesizers, big guitar riffs. And it, it had to be long, you know, six, six, seven minutes. Um and I, I, I remember sending her the, the demo and she answered something like, uh, may I compliment you on your, your, uh, you're one of the best composers there is. And I was like, okay, that, I guess that means I'm on the right track. So uh, yeah, that song is totally over the top. And I think we, we, we uh, brought it out as the first single because I think it represents uh, uh, the, the styles of Arion and, and Epica, you know, we would, didn't want to disappoint the fans with starting with a ballad or something, you know, people would think like, oh, is it going to be that kind of album? We wanted to start with a song that's totally over the top. And uh, and it's, it's a good thing we started with that song, you know, because it was received really well and it has like a, almost a million views on, on YouTube and the streaming is going well. So... Uh, can't complain there. Yeah, I think it was a great track to kind of start out, like just in my humble opinion as well for that single, because it does kind of showcase Simone's voice, uh, your compositions, and kind of both of you together of what the album is. But it's a really diverse, enjoyable album, which I enjoyed. You had Mark um, chucking cool, in with man. some, cool. you know, some heavy growls as well. You had to had, had to, to get him in there for the core had as there, well, yeah. and the red track, which was really, really cool. It must have been fun for Simone kind of to bring in a few friends as well, and some of the Epica guys as well to kind of create 
this album for you guys totally you know totally because because she was afraid people were going to say like oh and that's those were the first reactions you know oh simone is going to leave uh Epica, you know, and uh, they thought it was a tire situation, and and uh, and she was like, no, no, not at all, you know. The Epica f- uh, guys are totally behind this, and and uh, Mark is also a big friend of mine, and of course, Mark also joined in with Arion and and, st- and shit, and yep. so no, we have the whole Epica band uh, yeah. on there, you know. We have you know yourself. From the low- Sorry, you know yourself as a musician and an artist, like being able to jump around to different projects. And yeah, when you do have a main band, it's great, but it's not also the only musical thoughts that are going through your mind. You know, you're working on one project and you're going, oh, this track's not going to work for that band. You know, I'm I'm going to put that to the side. And, you know, when I'm doing that kind of project, I will be able to have that out. And it's obviously something that has been on Simone's mind for such a long time, you know. So she's got a lot of these tracks and compositions to the side. It makes you a better artist and musician being able to have these different vehicles to kind of express yourself because it's true we are two-dimensional people you know yeah because a lot of people say uh, that's not good for epica maybe you know and i'm sure it's good you know it will broaden the horizons and it will uh, you know, uh, Arion fans will also discover Epica and the solo album, you know, maybe people who don't know Epica hear the solo album and they will check out Epica. So it's good for everyone. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely unreal. It's coming out August 20 or 30, 23rd. There's uh, no through uh, Nuclear tw- Blast. Tw- uh, 23rd, I've 23rd, got here. Yes, 23rd yes. through <laughs> Nuclear Blast and the pre-orders are absolutely looking amazing. If you had to pick a favourite track off the album, I, I hate doing this to people because it's like picking a yeah. child. And I know <laughs> I listen to whole albums and it changes from me for week to week. Eat, you know, yeah, right, each listen. Right. But um, what would your favourite track be at the moment? I, 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 I would wife? say... Uh... I would say the singles we picked. So obviously, I turn out was a standout track. Uh, I love it, lovely Rust, because it's just a very strong composition, a very, very deep lyrics, and and I love the chorus in there. So, um, and then Cradle to the Grave, as you say, you know, with with Alyssa on on vocals. I mean, that works so well, and it was the first song, so I have a special place in my heart for that one. Um, and then, of course, we have Red out now. Um, which is pretty heavy, you know, which is, <laughs> it has this riff, like the kind of a Rammstein feel to it. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's hard to, to pick, but I would say those, those four would stand out. But they me. all take you, they all stand on their own and have these elements in it. Like I was listening to dystopia and I just kind of got really lost in the lyrics, the composition and the tracks. Cool, and cool, then cool. When, you know, at one point that guitar just like kicks in, I was just like, okay, and I'm back yeah, in the yeah, moment yeah. again. It was, yeah, yeah. it was a really, well, really well, cool track. I do enjoy the compositions. Obviously, uh, obviously that's, that's one of my personal favorites because I'm a big Pink Floyd fan, you know, and obviously yeah. that that song has, has a lot of Pink Floyd in there, especially, I mean, the guitars, if I start playing a guitar, so I will always sound like Gilmore because he's my hero, you know. So, uh, yeah, Dystopia would be one of my uh, my favorites too. Yeah. What's the, do you know what the plans are? Simone, I'm planning on like playing any of this live because you, this would be like absolutely unreal to kind of catch this on our limited performances around Europe and that. I know you guys I, are I, fairly I, busy. I, yeah. Yeah. I really hope so. But, but yeah, of course, they just finished a new Epica album, which is coming out. So they're going to promote that one probably for two years. Uh, and I'm going to do uh, uh, Arion shows again and stuff like that. So, uh, just a, just but, a big but, yeah. Aaron Epica Simone Simons Arjun night, I think, would just be absolutely unreal. Yeah, I, 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 I know, I know. It would be unreal. And, and it, you know, it's not in the cards, but uh, <clears throat> it, it I would say it's an option and it has to happen one day, you know, because the reactions have been so overwhelming to, to these first three songs we brought out. So... Yeah, you have you just have the feeling, you know, like shit, more is, is is this it? Is this it? I made an album, people like it, and that's it. You no, know, so I, I, yeah, I, 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 really I dare say something, something in the better. works for the next few years as well. This sounds like something that Simone has wanted to, to get out there and to be able to work with you as totally. well. Talking of live shows, I was over watching the live beneath the waves for Arion as well. That was absolutely amazing. That video performance you brought out CD for it as well. Cool, Jay. 
yeah, yeah i'm very proud of that one it was so over the top <laughs> so yeah. that that was our motto it was more is more like like uh, the famous words of ingrid malmsteen um you know, but shall we have pyro? Yes. <laughs> shall we have like this huge stage? Yes. Shall we have like Dolby surround sound? Yes. Shall we have 20 singers? Okay. <laughs> you know, we said yes to everything. So it's so over the top. And that's what I like about this show. Yeah. And the, also the that other um, band, Lucasen and Sodabeck's Plan 9. That was absolutely amazing dude i like that kind of stuff tell us quick cool. briefly about that project as well because i know you recently just dropped an album for that as well yeah 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 it, it was uh basically it was 30 year old songs that we made yeah. in the grunge days you know and there, no one was interested in that kind of music anymore so we just dropped it and uh, the singer is so amazing you know he's got this voice like david coverdale um, and he said, you know, let's re-record these songs. And I was like, oh, I don't know. You know, I, I don't live in the past. I don't like to do it. So let's do one song. And that was so much fun. And we made the song so much better. And uh, before we knew it, we had 13 songs finished and uh, label interested. And luckily it was released because I'm very proud of that one. Uh, it's an amazing album. That comes back to exactly what I was saying. Having these different vehicles and these musical projects not only totally. you know, inspires you and makes you a, a better musician. So with Simone Simo Simons and this Vermillion album, uh, you know, I would have inspired her to go back and go, oh, material for Epica. So hence <laughs> yeah, yeah. this album yeah, coming totally. out for Epica as well. So it's a it's a not yeah. a it's a win-win for, for artists and I, I know. Scene I as know. well to be able to, to work like that. Speaking of recording, where where did you just record this album? You know, did you do all that sort of stuff? Who done the production? I've got my own studio, so oh, uh, nice. most of the shit I can record at home. Yep. And of course, the drums was recorded in another studio and some of the musicians recorded at home, like Alyssa in her own studio. Uh, Rob van der Lowe, uh, the bass player of Epica, played it. Uh, but but most musicians came to me, you know, like uh, uh, Pertu of, of uh, Apocalyptica came here to record the cello. Um, <laughs> that, <laughs> I, I, I remember cello. that. I was going to ask you about that because that was unreal. That was really nice as kind of the, the close off the last of the album there with Dark Knight of the Soul. It was a really, really nice track and um, way to end it all. Yeah, it was such a weird track, such a different track, you know, such a, such a beautiful ballad that didn't really fit on the album. So I was to, telling Simone, why don't we put it all the way at the end, you know, like almost like an afterthought, you know, you have R.E.D. And it's like, well, R -E -D. and then suddenly you get this beautiful ballad with just acoustic guitars and, and, and uh, cello and stuff like that. And I think it, it works. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think it was an amazing way to end the album, and I know fans of Epica, your music, and Simone's music alike. And even if you have not heard it, people, you really got to do yourself a favor and play this album when it drops. Arjun, this has been an absolute pleasure, my friend, to get to talk to you about this album and briefly about your music. Do you have any last words, shout outs, thank yous, or anything else you'd like to add in there, my friend? Well, yeah. It, it was such a fun album to make, you know, and I, I really hope that comes across to people. And uh, like you, you know, you have such an open mind. You you like that you go from a, from a, from a, this beautiful ballad, uh, Dark Knight of the Soul, to the Floydish dystopia, to the huge Iterna, to the heavy red, you know. So I think people nowadays uh, have an, more of an open mind, you know, than, than back back in my days. So yeah, just thanks everyone for for uh, uh, for giving it a chance. <laughs> so and and yeah, let me know. I'm always open for for uh, uh, comments, uh, for opinions. So let me know what you think of it. And uh, and thanks to you, of course, Jay, for the support. Absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Everybody go out and grab the album from Simone Simons. It does drop 23rd of August through Nuclear Blast Vermillion. Go chuck in your pre-orders, get your merch, chuck it in the stereo, crank it up really bloody loud. The neighbours are going to want to hear it too. Oh, Cheers, yes. Mate. It should be loud. <laughs> Oi, you're tuned in to Joy That Aussie Metal Guy, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. So you don't miss any of his sick content. And remember, stay brutal, you legend.